Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we'll be solving a requested video and yeah, let's just get into it. So for the first question, we have um, these gases and we're supposed to mention the uses of them or which ones use for what. So a gas which combines with water to form acid rain, that is sulfur dioxide and it forms sulfuric acid. And also nitrogen oxides form acid rain even though it's not mentioned here. Now, two gases which exist as diatomic molecules, you'd automatically look at chlorine, but also carbon monoxide because diatomic molecules are composed of two atoms of the same or different chemical elements. So carbon monoxide is, yes, a diatomic molecule. Now, a gas which bleaches damp litmus paper, that is chlorine, and you can find it in your ions test in the syllabus, and you're supposed to memorize these. Now, uh, two gases... Oh no, a gas which is used as an inner atmosphere in lamps, that is argon, which is a noble gas, and you're supposed to, yes, know all the uses of the noble gases. Now, two gases which are found in clean, dry air, that is carbon dioxide and argon, and here's just a small part chart. And then finally, two gases which are found in refinery gas, that is the two hydrocarbons, G and H. Refinery gas is a non-condensable gas obtained during distillation of crude oils, so basically, in other words, in cracking, and it consists of hydrogen, methane, and um, olefins, which is just another name for alkenes. Now for part B, uh, nitrogen trifluoride has covalent bonds. So what is a covalent bond? A covalent bond is a shared pair of electrons between two atoms. And yes, it's, it's shared, so, and it's only between two atoms, and that's it. Now we're supposed to complete the dot and cross diagram for this. So nitrogen is in group 5 and fluorine is in group 7. So since it's in group 5, it means that it has 5 valence electrons and fluorine has 7 valence electrons. So for the nitrogen, I kept it as the dots and for fluorine, I kept it as the axis. So now we're just going to place it in there. So uh, you're going to go in order. So one, cro one dot at the top, then on the right, then the bottom, then the left, and you add again. And you realize at the end it ca it creates a full octet because they're sharing the electrons. So each um, atom sort of has a full octet, so almost or basically eight electrons. So making it stable. Okay, for C, they're asking us to define the term mixture. And mixture is two or more substances that are not chemically bonded, which is exactly the opposite of a compound. And then for double I, we need to state the percentage of oxygen, and that is 21%, which we saw earlier in the pie graph. Now for triple I, we have a mixture of nitrogen and oxygen, and we're supposed to separate it. So basically, this process is fractional distillation of air. And the first thing that we do is uh, the air is supposed to be made into a liquid or liquefied. Then it's boiled or evaporated according to its molecular mass or its boiling point. Then the vapor will condense and collect uh, in order of evaporation and the nitrogen will evaporate um, earlier than the oxygen because it is uh, it has a lower boiling point so of course if you want to know more about it there are a bunch of videos you can find online that show the exact process and everything because I know a lot of people are visual learners so which property um, allows for this to happen is because they have different boiling points or the fact that there are boiling points that this can actually happen. So now for question two, we're supposed to um, complete this lattice. So of course, with the positive ion around it, it's all going to be negative and um, around the negative will be positive and that's just it. So because again, uh, opposites attract and like, uh, like charges repel. So how many electrons does a chloride ion have? First of all, chlorine has 17 electrons, and you can find that out by looking at the periodic table. And then chloride is Cl minus, so it has that extra electron, so that would be 17 plus 1, which is a total of 18 electrons. Now we need to identify an element which has the same number of electrons as sodium ions. So first, sodium has 11 electrons. The sodium ion is Na plus, so that means it lost one electron, that's why it became positive 1. So 11 minus 1 is 10 electrons. And if you check the periodic table, neon has the same exact number of electrons as sodium ion. So now electrolysis, what is meant by electrolysis? It's the breakdown of an ionic compound, not a covalent one, uh, in its molten or aqueous state uh, by the passage of an electric current. 
Now, with that being said, we're asked to find the three products that are produced when we're electrolyzing aqueous sodium chloride. So basically, this is brine and brine is sodium chloride solution. When sodium chloride is dissolved in water, its ions separate and can conduct electricity. And then hydrogen is given off here and it's used to make ammonia. And the chlorine gas is given off at the anode, which is the positive electrode, and it's used to disinfect swimming pools. And then the sodium hydroxide that ends up combining is left in the solution and it's used to make soap and it used to clean ovens. And of course, these are the three things that are produced here. The chlorine is given off instead of the hydroxide and the hydrogen is given off instead of, or is produced instead of the sodium. Now write an ionic equation of the reaction of the cathode. The cathode is a negative electrode, so the cation is going to go there. So like we said, hydrogen is produced, so then the, hi uh, the hydrogen ion plus two electrons is going to gain those electrons in order to form the hydrogen gas and make sure to balance this equation. And now for part C, we're talking about making sodium nitrate. And in the first step, the student adds uh, aqueous sodium chloride to aqueous silver nitrate and is stirred. And neither agent was in excess. And what do they observe? They observe silver chloride, or basically a white precipitate. Now, in the ions test, which you'll have in your um, syllabus, you'll see that the Chlorine, when you have silver chloride, it forms white precipitate. When you have silver bromide, you'll find a green precipitate. And when you f uh, form silver iodide, you'll have a yellow precipitate. And uh, these are just a test to find out what um, anion is present in the solution. Now in the second step, the student filtered the mixture, right? And then he washed off the residue and added the washings to the filtrate. But why did he do that? He did that to make sure that all of the sodium nitrate ended up in the filtrate and that he didn't miss any of them and to make sure, you know, that they're all there. Now for step three, what were the two processes that were going on? Um, it was evaporation and crystallization. And he had to go through these to actually end up with just the sodium nitrate and without any water and the water simply evaporates and crystallization you have the crystals of sodium nitrate now the student started with 20 centimeters cubed of 0 0.20 moles per decimeter cubed of sodium chloride determine the amount of sodium chloride used so we're going to use uh, the formula c is equal to n over v which is concentration is equal to the number of moles over volume so we have the volume of 20 centimeters cubed. We're going to change that to decimeters cubed because that is the original unit for volume in this case. So you're just going to divide it by 1,000. Then we have the concentration, which is 0 0.20. We're going to now rearrange the formula to make number of moles the subject, which is going to be concentration times volume. And the answer would end up 4 times 10 to the power of negative 3 moles. Now we're supposed to find out or basically here, they're saying that only 90% of this was produced. So what is the mass of the sodium nitrate crystals? So the yield was 90%. So one mole gives us 85 grams. So sodium, you have the, the atomic mass, sorry. You have 23 plus the 14 plus 16 times 3 gives you 85 grams. You can get these uh, numbers from, again, your periodic table. So now we need 90% of 85 grams, so change 90% into decimals, that means divide by 100, so 85 times 0 0.90 is 76.5 grams. Now, we need to show the reaction uh, or the chemical equation for the action of heat on sodium nitrate crystals. So that would be sodium nitrate would give you sodium nitrite plus oxygen. Now you see lithium and um, group 2 uh, metals or their nitrates basically do not react like this. They're different than the group one elements. So for example, magnesium nitrate, if you thermally decompose it, it will give you magnesium oxide plus uh, nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. So just keep that in mind when they ask you to write the thermal decomposition of a uh, ionic compound. And of course, make sure to balance it out. So we have two magnesiums on each side. We have uh, four nitrogens on each side and six oxygens on both the left and right hand side. Now for question three and the last one for this first part of the video. Limestone rock is mainly calcium carbonate. So we're supposed to complete the box to give the chemical name and the formula of lime. So now limestone is heated and it turns into lime. So when you thermally decompose carbonates you get the 
uh, metal oxide and carbon dioxide. So that would be calcium oxide. So you have calcium and oxygen. Calcium has an oxidation state of 2 plus, oxygen of 2 minus. But the oxidation states go to the bottom of each, but then they cross out because 2 to 2 means it's a 1 to 1 ratio. Now, what type of reaction is, uh, which step involves a physical change? That would be in step 3 because you're going from solid calcium hydroxide to calcium hydroxide in an aqueous solution. An aqueous solution, sorry, of calcium hydroxide. Now, so just how step 2 could be reversed. So step 2 is the addition of limited water. Opposite of adding water would simply mean heating. And, you know, it, that's just it. Opposite of water is heat. Now, write a chemical equation for step 4. So they're saying calcium hydroxide in aqueous solution of calcium hydroxide plus carbon dioxide um, should give us calcium carbonate. And then what about the two hydrogens and oxygen, that is water, which is H2O. And of course, you have to make sure everything's balanced out. Now, uh, explain why step four is a neutralization reaction. Refer to the substances reacting in your answer. It's a neutralization reaction. Why? Because carbon dioxide is acidic and calcium hydroxide is an alkali or is basic. And neutralization is an acid-base reaction. And usually water is one of these products. And as you can see, water is present. Now, we have another substance that's similar to the calcium, uh, calcium carbonate, which is dolomite. And they told us to write out the chemical equation for dolomite um, uh, reacting with uh, dilute nitric acid. So magnesium carbonate plus dilute nitric acid will give you magnesium nitrate, just like the calcium carbonate, plus the water, plus now the carbon dioxide that's given off. So it's the same thing. You have calcium carbonate, magnesium nitrate, you have the water in the water, and you, of course, can't forget balancing it out. You have to make sure that there's a carbon somewhere, and so that would have been carbon dioxide. So now for part C, which involves finding the empirical formula of this magnesium compound. So they told us the mass of the magnesium was 2.73, silicon was 1.58, and oxygen was 3.60. So you're going to write it out like this. Then you're going to divide each one by its um, molecular mass. So in my periodic table, it had an extra decimal. But in your IUCSE one, it's a whole number. So 2.73 divided by 24, 1.58 divided by 20, and so on. You get these numbers. Then you're going to divide by the smallest value, which in this case is 0 0.056. Then you'll end up with 2, 1, and 4. And that is your ratio. It's 2 to 1 to 4. So it's magnesium to silicon 1, which you don't have to write out, and the oxygen 4. And that's what you have, the empirical formula. And that is it for the first three questions. And the next video will have the last two questions, questions 4 and 5, which, um, it, which talk about ammonia and organic compounds.